Okay, fingers crossed that this is working. I have been trying to go live since yesterday and I have had nothing but problems. I guess that's what you get for not going live for like eight months straight. Um, so, I'm Ashley, welcome back, glad you're joining me. And today I'm making my, uh, my current most popular recipe on my blog, which is perfect for fall because it's a one pot loaded baked potato soup. So it doesn't get much better. I've actually already started because the very first thing is to cook the bacon and who doesn't love bacon. And because of the size of my pot, I need to cook it in, um, in two rounds. So I've already started and let's switch the camera angle so you can actually see what's going on. <laughs> All right. And here we go. So. This is just a splatter screen, but as you can see, the bacon is already going. I'm just going to flip that over now. And uh, yeah, so this soup starts with bacon. That's the base. Now this is really similar to my, um, to my uh, uh, cheddar broccoli soup. Oh my gosh, my brain's like gone. My cheddar broccoli soup and my clam chowder. Um, but I actually, my clam chowder and my cheddar broccoli soup both use uh, a bechamel sauce, a white sauce, as the thickener, and so it always takes two pots. So when I was working on this one, I'm like, I wonder if there's a way to take that same recipe and all the goodness that's in it and all the deliciousness and the creaminess and the thickness and uh, and make it one pot. So, that, uh, so basically, I'm going to go back and turn my other soups into one pot too because it works so good, and, uh, and yeah. So you want to make sure that you're moving the bacon so that it doesn't burn, but use your splatter screen so you don't hurt yourself. Uh, so anyway, I have not been going live in a long time, so I might be a little bit nervous today. I'm not used to doing this. Uh, hopefully everything is working just fine. So if it is, let me know in the comments. Um, if it's not, <laughs> let me know in the comments as well. So I will be going live from now on, on Tuesday evenings. Uh, I was supposed to go live last night, but again, problems. So I'll be going live on Tuesdays from now on, and I'm going back to sharing edited videos on, on YouTube on Fridays. So look for that. I'm super excited. I've missed you guys. I've missed creating recipes. I've uh, missed, yeah, I've missed teaching and sharing and all that that entails. All right, this is looking good. So the big question is, how do you like your bacon? Are you on the more on the raw side, more on the cook side? Hello, Adriana. It's good to see you. Welcome, welcome. All right. Everybody likes their bacon a little bit different. Are you a slow, a low and slow cooker? Like that to me is perfect. We're gonna pull that out. Are you a low and slow bacon cooker? Are you fast and maybe a little bit crispy and burnt? You know. The, that's probably the most important ingredient in anything is the bacon, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. My dad is the perfect bacon cook. He doesn't burn it. He goes low and slow method. It's seriously amazing. Um, but yeah, I don't necessarily have a lot of patience or a lot of time because I am actually, as soon as I'm done with this video, racing to the airport and going on a trip with my son for his 13th birthday. I'm taking him on a trip, we're going over to London to do all of the Harry Potter stuff because we're huge Harry Potter fans. Ooh, check that out. All right, so usually I would go ahead and cook this other half of the bacon too, but we are running out of time, so I'm debating. I guess there's not really much to debate. It's bacon. You should just always go for it, right? All right. So hopefully this bacon will cook faster because it already has all of that delicious grease. I feel like I have to yell over the sound of the bacon because it's so loud. So as you join, let me know where you're joining from. Uh, Rhonda, hello. You like the low and slow until crispy. It's a good choice. If I was at home, I would just have my dad make the bacon. He's seriously the best bacon cook ever. Uh, Savannah, yum, yes. Yum is right, let's face it. If there's bacon in it, I like it. So, one of my favorite recipes, dang, this is so loud. <laughs> one of my favorite recipes is actually um, my bacon, maple bacon cupcakes. Um, yeah, I know it probably sounds a little bit weird, but they are seriously so good. Okay. 
Uh, all right, so how is everybody's fall going? I have had a great fall so far, although I feel like the fall is a little bit short this year. Um, we had a really warm summer and it lasted really long and now it's like snowing in wintry already. Okay, it's not quite snowing, but it's supposed to snow soon. And I feel like I kind of got gypped because fall is my absolute favorite season. All the comfort foods, all the deliciousness. Uh, hello, Sanjay from Ontario, Canada. Nice to see you, welcome, welcome. All right, so from now on the live videos will be Tuesday evenings around four o'clock my time, Mountain Standard Time. Um, unless you guys really like the mornings, but mornings haven't quite been as popular, so I was going to stick with afternoons, but I wanted to make sure I got one video in before I left town, so we're getting a random morning video. So next week I was thinking about doing um, Halloween treats, easy, quick Halloween treats. What do you guys think of that? Let me know in the comments if there's another fall comfort food you'd like to see, or, uh, or if Halloween treats sounds good. Oh. All right, I'm going to show you guys a view of this bacon again, although it's like spitting all over me because there's so much grease in that first bat. All right, here's another question for you. Do you prefer to cook your bacon in strips like this, or do you like to chop and then chop it up afterwards, or do you like to chop it up first and then cook it? I like how fast it cooks when it's chopped up beforehand, but, um, but I don't love trying to get it all out and leaving the grease inside to cook with. And we want the grease for the base of the soup. So I went with a strip and planning on cutting it up later for that reason. So just keep things moving if you're in a hurry. All right, Zion's mom, hello from Rochester, New York. Hello, uh, Katrina, your caramel popcorn recipe is the best. I'm so glad you enjoy it. That actually, I actually got that popcorn recipe, that caramel recipe from my uh, sister and her husband. Um, and beyond that, I'm not quite sure where it came from, but they make it all the time. My brother-in-law has a hilarious story about he couldn't stop eating it and how he tried to stop himself. Uh, California Tommy, you like to cook it in strips. Awesome. Crystal, you're roasting pumpkins. Nice. Delicious. Zion's on Halloween treats ideas. Yes. Oh, Crystal, that's your suggestion. Roasting pumpkins. I actually did a, uh, how to make your own pumpkin puree video last year, if that's what you're interested in. Um, you like to cook in strips, strips. Yay, I'm so glad that I'm not the only one who likes to cook them in strips and then chop them up later. There's just something about being able to grab all that bacon out of there that's just nice. Um, all right, Christina, you, you're happy to see you back. You missed you, God bless, and thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you so much. It has been crazy. So for those of you who don't know, I'm actually in the middle of a divorce, which is never fun. And of course, expensive. And so I had to get a real job on the side and it kind of took some time away from being able to be with you guys and be a part of all this. So thanks for sticking with me. Thanks for coming back when I went live and uh, I'm back to being regular, knock on wood. <laughs> and we're going to have a lot of fun. So don't forget in the comments to leave me tons of suggestions of uh, ketchup videos, what you want to see to make up for all the time that I've been gone. Cakes, recipes, comfort food, desserts, sweets, savory. I want to hear it all. I want all the suggestions. All right, we're almost done with this second batch of bacon and then we will move on with the rest of the soup. Um, those of you coming in late, I'm actually supposed to be at the airport in like 30 minutes. So we're trying to race through this. Um, I'm not even gonna get to enjoy this soup afterwards. Uh, my daughter's gonna enjoy it while I'm gone. She's house sitting for me. It's weird to have a daughter who's like old enough to be responsible to house sit. Like, that's crazy. My oldest is a senior this year and we're looking at colleges right now, which is crazy. So she's into graphic arts. Um, she's, a, she's a wonderful artist. So if anybody has suggestions for good colleges for graphic arts, hit me up because um, yeah, I went to college for theater. <laughs> Shocking, I know. Um, so the colleges that I looked at ooh, 22 years ago, <laughs> that makes me feel old. Um, are very different than college options that there are now. All right, so check this out. We are almost done with this bacon. Get that video. Uh, we're just waiting on that last little bit of goodness. Um, 
Yeah, California tammy. I got it. Even strips of bacon and then chopping after cooking. <laughs> no problem. My connection has been spotty too. Uh, if you can cook without your kids, you prefer strips. <laughs> oh, Tammy, I'm so glad. Thank you so much. That's so sweet of you to say that you missed me. It has, it's been crazy. I've actually been traveling a lot and spending a lot of time with my kids, which of course is really nice. Um, but I'm excited to kind of get back to this and you guys and sharing. Honestly, the thing that I enjoy the most about my job, about blogging and YouTubing is, well, I love the video, but really what I love is the teaching and the connections. I used to teach uh, in-person classes, um, but that you know, has a whole lot of problems in and of itself. So being able to do this live, it's pretty amazing what technology has done, right? I'm one of those people who... I remember growing up without all of this stuff, but now I'm also, I've had it long enough in my life that I'm not like a total noob, I hope. Um, I don't know what that's called, like in between, I can't keep up with all that millennial and Gen X and all that stuff. So anyway, so the fact that we have little computers in our pockets, I sound really old saying that, but it's pretty amazing. Okay, so we have a pound of bacon ready to be chopped up. I'm gonna put it off to the side to let it cool. And we are going to add butter because who doesn't need more fat with all this baking grease? I'm, usually I just like plop it in, but I'm a little bit nervous about um, it like splattering all over me. So the butter is softened, so it shouldn't take too long to melt. Throwing everything in my sink to clean later or for my teenager to clean later because I'm gonna be on a plane. All right, and there is that butter melting away. And to that, we're gonna add some onions. And some uh, garlic. And last but not least, some potatoes. So here's the next question for you. Do you prefer uh, russet potatoes or golden potatoes in soups? I prefer golden potatoes for, um, uh, for mashed potatoes, and, but for, uh, for soups, I kind of go back and forth. I like them both, but I don't like mix them within a soup. I either use all russet or all golden because the rate that they cook and their water retention is very different. Um, and I don't want to mess that cook time up. All right, let's turn this heat up and let's get these veggies fried and all that butter and grease. This looks good already, right? I mean, you can't really go wrong with this much butter and grease. All right, whoops, onion down. This is why you clean your counters so you can grab downed onions when you can. Oh, Katrina, you're very sweet. I am doing well, thank you so much. Tammy, glad to see me back. Thank you. Zion's mom, golden potatoes. Katrina, red potatoes. Uh, Sanjay, both. All right, so this is when I admit that I'm not really into red potatoes. Like, uh, I know people who love them, love them. And I'm a, uh, for me, it's all about the starches. I'm a potato girl through and through. Um, meat and potatoes, <laughs> through and through. Um, just never really gotten into red potatoes. I've had had some red potatoes that were done really well a couple times, but I don't know. I just give me a good russet or golden any day of the week. So, um, and you'll notice in the recipe, which is in the description box down below or on my blog, I just say like one small onion or five to six potatoes. I think I went a little overboard on onions and potatoes this time, um, but that's the best part about soup, right? Cooking is not like baking. You don't have to be as precise as you are. Uh, with a baking recipe when you're making soups, which is awesome. Um, so you can just kind of toss and taste. So honestly, I just kind of see whatever onions I have left, whatever potatoes I have left, uh, and chop them up and get them in there. So, all right, this is looking good. So what we're really looking for here is for the onions to be more clear, like they've fried through a little bit. Um, you can smell the garlic already. That's the other thing I always go overboard on, garlic. In a recipe, I'll usually try to go, uh, you know, when I'm writing it for, for all y'all, I just, I put like a normal amount of garlic, but when I actually make it for myself, 
I like double or sometimes triple the amount of garlic. I'm a huge garlic fan. All right, so those onions are looking good. We're getting some nice clear markings in there. So we are gonna move on with the recipe. So now we're actually going to um, add the flour. So this is the part that usually I would cook all the veggies and then on the side, I would make a thick white sauce and I would add the thick white sauce to the veggies. But this time I'm doing, uh, I, this is all one pot, so you don't have to get a second pot dirty. So this is the part that is so important, is coating all these veggies with this flour, which is gonna help make our thickening agent. And it would also cook out, you also wanna cook out the taste of potatoes. And this is why I add, added so much uh, butter to the baking crease at the beginning. You want there to be enough fat to create uh, that roux here with the flour. We're just happening, instead of making a roux by itself and then thickening it, we're making it with the veggies. So that is my shortcut. We're also gonna add some pepper. And so, like I said, garlic is one of my weaknesses and so is salt. Now, if you're watching your salt intake, obviously maybe measure this. Uh, I not. I probably should. Anyway, and keep that stirring because we don't want anything to burn onto the bottom. All right, and just stir that until you kind of get a golden color. And you want to give it probably about like a minute and a half, two minutes to make sure you cook out, oop, potato down, that um, floury taste. I remember when I was younger, and people would talk about that. They would be like, oh, you want to cook the flour out? I mean, not that my parents were cooks. They weren't, but like on TV shows or as I was reading recipes, dreaming about cooking, um, I never really understood that until I didn't cook out the flour in a recipe. And then I'm like, ah, oh, I get it now. All right, so now that this is all cooked up, we're going to add our liquid. So first, I'm going to add the chicken broth. Oh, and I use uh, Better Than Bouillon to make my own broth so I can just keep it in the fridge and then I don't have to constantly be buying broth. So sometimes a little bit gets stuck to the bottom. All right, I'm going to get a metal spoon or something. All right, I'm going to get a nice strong wooden spoon so I can scrape that bottom a little bit. We're going to, it's called the glazing the pan. When you've cooked something on it that has kind of coated the bottom like that, like our flour mixture, and then you add a liquid, wines or broths or waters to a hot pan and help scrape off and clean off that base. And now we're gonna add our dairy. So I have some thick, heavy whipping cream. Rain, hello from Missouri, thank you. It's glad to, I'm glad to be back. That almost didn't make sense. Uh, Tammy, yes, I will be making cakes again. All right, and then this is milk. Now, I always cook with whole milk. Um, I'm all about, uh, I think fats taste better, so you get a better end product, and they fill you up better. And so um, I would rather eat less and be more filled with something that tastes amazing then go with low fat stuff and have it not be as filling and be more hungry anymore than I have to eat twice as much or okay not twice as much but you know um, anyway personal preference all right we're giving this a good stir and then we want to bring it to a simmer so I'm gonna scrape the bottom again and I'm going to add a lid onto here to help it come to a simmer faster one of the other things that I like about this soup is just simply how quick it is Honestly, it's just not a very time-consuming soup. Okay, we've got that lid on. And while this is simmering, now we're gonna chop all that bacon, so. Clean up the counter a little bit. Move this off to the side. Oh, this is so heavy. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to move the pot over without spilling it on my counter. Oh, almost fell off. Okay. <laughs> when I was planning this video, I was trying to figure out how to best do that. Like, do I 
move it all the way back there to cook it, but I just figured it's easier to keep it cooking right in front of me where I can keep an eye on it. Um, okay, so cutting board and bacon. So let's give this some cutting. Oh, you guys, it smells so good. Who doesn't love bacon? All right, Tammy, am I going to making cakes again? I am, in fact, I have a video scheduled for Friday, an edited style video, coming out on the channel on Friday, I think at noon, although I'm not quite sure. I'll have to double check that, I should know that. And, um, and it's a cake. It's my uh, triple peanut butter cake. So peanut butter cake with peanut butter mousse and peanut butter frosting, um, and then decorated with peanut butter cookies and peanut butter candies, so you know, hopefully you like peanut butter. I do, obviously. <laughs> Okay, so after school snacks, let's talk. Because my kids, I, um, so what I do for my side job is I actually make those Facebook style hands only, you know, one minute videos for other food bloggers and brands. Um, and it's nice to have a job that I can do and stay home. Um, and the benefit of it is also that I'm making food. I film um, Monday through Thursday. So I make, and I make like five recipes a day. And so, <laughs> Um, we get a lot of food. It's not all, you know, my recipes are my style, but we do have a lot of food. So for snack foods, after school snacks for my kids, they're eating things like full on meals. Um, like the other day I had made a lamb recipe for a client. So my kids came home from school and we ate, you know, fresh lamb and potatoes. And anyway, it's awesome. But I know that's not normal. Um, and I'm cutting back on client videos so I can get back to doing all of this and getting back to my own brand. Um, and so now I'm kind of going, what am I going to feed my kids after school? So when I was growing up and this, now that I think about it, it kind of sounds nasty. When I was growing up, my mom would give us for after school snack, just a big, huge spoonful of peanut butter, just a big spoon of peanut butter. In fact, my mom still enjoys just a spoonful of peanut butter. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't quite go that far. Like I enjoy a good uh, peanut butter and honey on toast or something, but uh, yeah. And I love peanut butter cake and peanut butter cupcakes and peanut butter ice cream. Oh, that's another good recipe for my website. My peanut butter, my creamy peanut butter ice cream is seriously amazing. It's so good. All right, so there is that. Put this off to the side. And now we're gonna chop some green onions for the top. All right, and because I'm lazy, I'm just gonna use the other side of this, and then I'm gonna clean my counter. And by lazy, I mean in a big hurry. <laughs> Let's check the soup really fast. Oh, bring it back over, so heavy. Okay, it's not quite simmering yet, which we need it to do. I need two hands. So what we need it to do is come to a simmer and then simmer for a little ways. Uh, Miriam from Cape Town, South Africa. I would love to go to South Africa someday. It's like one of my, it's my parents' bucket list. Um, and yeah, I would love to go. This is your first time in a live chat. My cooking looks interesting. Well, thank you very much. And I'm glad that you've joined us. Live chatting can be really fun. All right, does anybody have any questions so far? about the soup i'm actually looking for all right i can't find my metal scraper so i'm going to use my fish scraper so i want to get a little bit more of this stuff off the bottom and my wooden spoon isn't cutting it and because this is cast iron you can use metal in it um, but i'm afraid that all the stuff that's on the bottom i couldn't quite scrape off it will keep it from coming to a good boil. So you want to make sure that when you're deglazing, you're not in a rush and you're not talking to people and you take the time to deglaze the pan really good. Because I left a little bit on there. I can feel it as I'm stirring and that's going to keep it from coming to a nice boil like we need. So, all right, there we go. That is better. Hopefully that will help us come to a simmer quicker. All right, does anybody else love soups and comfort food? I probably make soup, I don't know, like twice a week. We, we love soups so, so much. 
And this is what happens when you don't do things right. It takes longer to fix later. <laughs> so just take the time to deglaze the pan when you put the broth in. You will not regret it. Okay, I think we got a nice clean base now. I just one spot I can feel. Okay, here we go. Lid back on. Put this bag over here to the side. Oh, so heavy. And now we're gonna chop our green onions. Okay, so green onion chopping. I've already taken the outside layer off of these green onions. Cut the ends off. How high up the green do you go? That's my question. Because um, I know that the green looks really good on like the top of soups and stuff, but the flavor for me, I like the flavor of the oniony part better than all of this. So I don't go up as high as most people do. Personal preference. So what do you guys do? Do you go up super high? Do you stay down near the white area? All right. And if you've noticed my fingernails are a little purple, that's because I just got my hair done yesterday. And when you, when it's super fresh, even though I've washed it twice already, every time I like scratch your hair, which, you know, after you bleach it, cause my hair is naturally black. If you bleach it to dye it, it's a little bit itchy. Anyway, so I'm trying really hard not to touch and scratch my hair cause my fingernails are getting purple and they're hard to wash off. Oh. Anyway. anyway, so I tend to, go until I hit like that first and I start taking away all the ones that kind of like get floppy as I come up and cut I pull those out I just like my green onions to be firm I guess is a better thing than the amount of green on them so when I get to like the soft area of the leaves I kind of stop hmm. that one's a little bit soft I don't know I also probably overcut my chicken like cut away the fats and the tendons and stuff like that. All right, that's good enough. So do you cut all the way to the end? Would you cut all of this stuff and am I crazy? Or do you stop here? That is the question for you. You use the whole onion, Sanjay, nice. You use the whole stock too, Lindsay. All right, so maybe I'm just weird. <laughs> I don't know, I just, when it gets floppy and then when you cut it and it like squishes instead of cuts and then you have like a strand that's like all knifed up, but I don't know. Probably just me being weird. Okay, so Halloween is coming up and for those of you who celebrate, the big question is, I should have gotten a bigger bowl, I have more onions than this. Big question is, what are you guys gonna be? So we are Harry Potter fans and we are gonna, my kids, uh, last year when we went to Legoland, we did, um, we did Harry Potter and this year with all the traveling that I've been doing and a retreat that I'm showing, that I'm doing, teaching other food bloggers how to do YouTube, um, we're just gonna do the same costume again. And I don't usually repeat costumes. That's really weird for me, but they turned out so good. Um, but we do family themes. Does anybody else do family themes for Halloween? So my younger three are gonna be Harry, Ron, and Hermione. And my older two are kind of like, eh, we're too old to dress up, which pff, I'm not too old to dress up, so they're not too old to dress up. Um, but at the same time, it's also kind of a relief because I'm like, oh, that's two costumes I don't have to do. But um, if I did have the time, I would turn them into um, Snape. My, my, ton is, my son is taller than me now. So I would turn him into Snape. And, you know, he's a teenager, so he's already got the greasy hair thing going on. Um, and my daughter... Um, Professor McGonagall or Trelawney, probably Trelawney, just because that'd be super fun. Um, and then I would be Tonks, of course. Psst, hair, gotta go with that. But now we're gonna check on the soup and see how it's coming. We've got a simmer going on yet. Ah, we do. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna scrape the bottom of this again. That's the thing with creamy soups, is you wanna make sure um, that you don't just leave it to simmer the way you do with like wetter soups because it will just continue to cook on the bottom and that will not only get burnt stuff in your soup, which nobody wants, but it will also uh, impede the ability to, to simmer properly. And then it will take even longer. All right, so again, I'm gonna scrape the bottom again. This, now it shouldn't take as long. Oh, or not. <laughs> 
There we go. Just hit a bad spot. Now remember, do not use metal in non-stick pans, only in other metal pans and in um, uh, and cast iron. So if you have non-stick pans, it, luckily you don't really have quite the same problem, but you still do want to be stirring it constantly. So now we're just waiting for the potatoes to cook and the soup to thicken up. That's kind of all there's left. And then we're going to add all the last of the ingredients. So because this is a loaded baked potato soup, I put cheese, bacon, onions, uh, green onions, sorry, green onions, and sour cream. What do you like on your loaded potatoes? All right, Katrina's like me. She doesn't cut the floppy stuff on the green onions. Awesome. You a little bit of both, Olivia. Uh, Amanda, your son is 6'5 and 16. Dang, 6'5". All right, so I'm 5'9", and I feel super short, even though I know I'm not, because on my side of the family, my aunts are both six feet tall. Um, on my ex-husband's side of the family, his sisters are both six feet tall. Um, my girl cousins range from like 6'5", to, to uh, is Lindsay six feet, to like 5'11". Uh, but I always wanted to hit six feet. Like that was my goal. So when I stopped at five nine, I was super sad about it. Um, like super sad about it. The funny thing is, one of my cousins, Kelsey. When have you ever done that? When they're two years old, you measure them, then you double them. That's the height they should be. Anyway, my cousin Kelsey, when she was at that age, and they did the whole measurement thing and figured it all out. I don't actually know what it is, but um, <clears throat> she was supposed to be six feet tall. I was super jealous. Anyway. Um, so when she, and so her mom spent her whole life going, oh, six feet tall is amazing. Tall girls are so lucky. Just kind of going, oh my word, six feet tall is so rough on a girl. How is she going to do this? But really trying to make the best of it. So when she went into the doctor and they're like, hey, by the way, you're, you know, five, eight and you're done growing. She just burst into tears and she's like, but I want to be six feet tall. And her mom's like, no, I lied. I lied. Five, eight's great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Six feet tall. Anyway. Long story short, I really wanted to be six feet tall. My dad's 6'2", my uncles are all 6'4". I have one cousin who's 6'8", super tall. Um, so yeah, and then on my ex-husband's side of the family, his, his family, all the guys are like 6'2". So girls are six feet and boys are 6'2". Anyway, so my oldest, my 17-year-old, when she stopped at 5'7", I was the one who burst into tears. I had such high hopes for her hitting six feet tall like I always wish I did. That's why I'm always wearing such high heels, trying to be tall. It's statuesque, love that word. Um, anyway, so my 15-year-old is uh, taller than me now. He's like 5'10", maybe 5'10 and a half. So it'll be interesting to see if he stops at 6'2", like his dad and my dad, or if he hits 6'4", like my uncle's. He's certainly not going to get to like the 6'8", like my cousin, but a 16-year-old, 6'5", dang, he might, right? That's, what are his, what's his shoe size? That's a big question. Because my cousin who's 6'8", um, who's I want to say he's like a size 16 shoe or something like ridiculously large and hard to shop for and find. All right, let's, you guys are here for the recipe. Let's go back to the recipe. All right, so, oh, come on. Come over. There we go. All right, so now we got this nice rolling boil and I'm just, once it comes to a simmer, I usually leave the lid off and just kind of slowly keep stirring it again because it's a cream-based soup and I don't want the bottom to get all burnt and stuff. So this is looking really good. We're gonna test a potato really fast. I can get a fork out. Because that's the real, oh, let's grab that one. That was a nice big potato. I always try to get the biggest potato I can find because if the biggest potato is done, then that means the, um, the other potatoes will be done, right? That's what I look for. And not quite. It's close, but not quite. So we're going to keep boiling for another couple minutes. All right. Oh, it smells so good. This is also a good time to do a taste test and decide if you need more salt or not. So I have a, I keep a whole drawer of tasting spoons, just little these spoons like this for tasting. Oh, the soup spit on me. Oh, wrong, sh wrong shot. The soup spit on me and I burn the back of my hand. All right. But now we don't have all the ingredients in yet, so it's not gonna be quite the right flavor. We're just testing for that saltiness. Mm, add a little bit. 
bit more. We are going to add some cheese, which does have its own saltiness. So a lot of times you don't want to double test that until you've added the cheese, but I just kind of like to stay on top of things as I'm cooking. So, all right. You're 5'10", dang. So you're tall too, mama. Katrina, you're 5'5". Five five. Oh, for some reason, I always make friends with girls who are shorter than me. So one of my best friends, one of my best friends is tall. She's my height, which is nice. Uh, but one of my best friends is from, my best friend from high school and on. Uh, she's 5'4". And one of my best friends here in Utah is also 5'4". So, and I like to call my daughter 5'7 shorty, but she's totally not short. Like, I just, she'll always be littler than me. It's kind of fun. I'll always have a little, she'll always be my baby, my little, my little girl. Oh, size 13 shoe. At least you can still find those in the store. That is nice. Um, do I have any kids who can't trick or treat because they're too old? Um, my older two don't like to. They'll go around with us as a family, but they'll kind of stay on the street with me. They'll go to like the church social with us as a family so I can still do my family themes, but they don't like, I don't, once they're, my 13 year old this year, he's kind of right on the verge for me because he has Asperger's. So even though he's 13, he's kind of small and he's also um, a little bit socially behind. I'm going to let him do it again, but um, this might be his last year too. We'll see. I kind of also go by their own feel. If they're comfortable or not comfortable, and but I don't let them like go out with friends. And I, they have to go with us as a family and stay. So you know, I'm watching, making sure they're not being punk kids or anything like that. But my oldest two, honestly, they would not go if I didn't make them. They would prefer to stay home, watch Hocus Pocus, and hand out the candy. So we actually don't have a great neighborhood for trick or treating, though. So we don't go out for very long. Really, our church party is probably. Um, our favorite part of the of the Halloween season. Okay. Well, whether we're done or not, we are getting to the point that we have to be done because I have a plane to catch. <laughs> All right. We have been going for, I can't tell how long it's been going for. I guess I should just look at my watch. Ah. So we've been going for 37 minutes. I started that first batch of bacon probably about two minutes before we started. So this soup is awesome because you can make it in less than an hour. In fact, uh, if I'm not trying to do two things at once, like talk and teach and make it, I always make my cornbread too. I'll start the bacon, I'll get the soup started, um, I'll mix in my cornbread. And my cornbread is like, you know, again, just a one bowl, mix, pour, cook, super fast, cooks for 20 minutes. Um, and so I usually get it in uh, right about the same time as I start the simmering and add the cream and all that stuff. Um, and then it's done by the time the soup is done. So I make this soup and cornbread in less than an hour. It's a great quick meal. It's ugh, perfect comfort food. Um, you can always take this same soup recipe and make clam chowder like I do, or, uh, uh, broccoli cheddar soup. There's a couple changes here and there that you'd make. Both those recipes are on my site. Um, right now the versions on my site are the ones where you make the cream sauce separately and pour it in, but the same principles of this, adding the flowers to the vegetables, cooking that flour, um, and then adding the liquid after that would apply to those recipes as well. The big one is the broccoli. You don't want to add the broccoli, uh, too soon. So I don't know. I'll have to play with the one pot for the cheddar broccoli soup. All right, let's try this again. Um, see if we've got a good cook on these potatoes. Find another one that's a good size. Ah, went right through. Perfect. Now, I don't like mine too soggy, so I try to catch them while they're still just a little bit crisp. So I'm going to turn the heat off. And now we're going to add a bunch of the cheese and stir that in. Uh, I might just have to have a bowl of this before I leave town. So good. This is going to be my breakfast. <laughs> like I said, I don't have typical food because I'm cooking uh, meals all day long and filming recipes all day long. I don't like have typical snack foods and stuff like that. All right. Once the cheese is melted, we're going to add everything else. So out of all this bacon that we cooked earlier, we're actually not going to use it all. We're going to like 
save some of it to top the soup with. So I'm going to use probably like two thirds of it, especially those little crumbs, and leave some for people to top. And then some sour cream. And the sour cream is not something I put in my other soups. It's really just this loaded baked potato soup. And then same thing with the green onions. We're going to save um, some for topping. So again, use about two thirds and stir this. Oh, oh no, I just made a huge mess. Oh, you guys, I just made a huge mess that I hit that sour cream blob and it just pushed everything over the side. Oh, oh I guess who's going to have to clean that one up? Me. Okay. Oh, look how good that looks. Let's get a nice close up going on. Oh, this sour cream is not, not quite. Oh, so good. I love this soup so much. I'm so happy that it's such a popular res uh, recipe on my site. It's always fun when something that I love uh, that you guys love too. It's always weird when like the top recipe is one that I was just like, me, that one was okay. Uh, my other top recipes right now are some of my other favorites though, which is nice. My caramel popcorn balls, my homemade hot chocolate, um, which of course I make homemade marshmallows for. My homemade eggnog will have a nice little surge with the holidays coming. So, all right, let's make a bowl. So I can try it. Make sure I didn't just, you know, poison everybody. <laughs> um, I should have been prepared and had a bowl ready. That's okay. Oh, seriously, such a mess. Okay. This is that money shot, right? You gotta come up and show all the texture. See how good it turns out. Mm -hmm. So good. Okay. And now I'll move this out of this off to the side. So we can like do that. Oh. Do that pretty topping shot that who doesn't love, right? And we got some extra cheese. And some extra bacon and some extra green onions. And if you really want to go crazy, you can also add um, some more sour cream to the top. But I find that the sour cream that's in there is enough, especially since it's a cream based soup. It is pretty creamy in and of itself. Ah, so good. Now, my favorite part, probably not yours. I did have a comment once where somebody said, that's so rude of you to take a bite at the end. And I thought, I spent a lot of time making that. Of course I'm going to take a bite. But, you know, you want to see the person making it actually eats it. That'd be pretty funny if somebody made a whole recipe and then was like, but I don't eat that. You know, I don't like that. Mm. Hot. I do not make this soup enough. This is such a good soup. Mm, 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 mm. So Friday, I have a new uh, cake video coming out. It is my triple peanut butter cakes. So don't forget if you've already subscribed, if you hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when new videos come on. And next Tuesday in the evening, um, four o'clock mountain standard time. So I don't know what that is everywhere else, but, um, I will be going live, uh, doing Halloween treats and stuff like that. And I will probably stick with Tuesday nights. Um, just because they seem to have been good for everybody, but also leave me notes in the comments, other recipes that you want to see, um, other like maybe movies you want to see cakes made out of, or other cakes you just want a base recipe for. So right now I have my chocolate cake recipe up, I have my cinnamon chocolate chick recipe up, my peanut butter recipe up, but I haven't added any of my other cake recipes. So if you want to see other cake recipes, let me know. And um, I can't think of anything else. <laughs> subscribe notification bell let me know what you want to see oh and also in the comments let me know if there's a better time for you to participate in the live videos and if you like them if you want me to keep the lives going versus the edited so i am going to change out of my pajama pants put on some jeans and race to the airport to catch my flight with my son we're going to england to do all the harry potter stuff I'm super excited about that um 
So thank you so much for watching and participating and I promise it will not be another nine months before I come back. I've missed you and I've missed this and I'm so excited to be back. So, um, money shot looks amazing. Yes, you get annoyed if people don't take a bite. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. Kim, you missed it, don't worry. You can replay it. Um, it was a really fast under an hour recipe that you will love to make. Uh, Rain, you like to watch me cook. Sorry, your recipes. And you like my great hair color and my sweet eyelashes. Thank you very much. So thank you everybody. I will be back next Tuesday, promise, uh, unless we have technical difficulties and it'll be Wednesday morning again. <laughs> so thank you so much for participating, for watching, for talking with me, uh, for keeping me company while I make one of my favorite meals and I hope you guys enjoy. Bye. Mm-hmm. <laughs>